Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you all today. My name is Alex Olshansky. I'll be presenting this work on behalf of my colleagues, Dr. Kurt Key and Dr. Shan Su. We come from the College of Media and Communication at Texas Tech University. Today we'll be presenting a socio-technical framework uh, and a scale development effort for measuring organizational capacity during cyber infrastructure implementation, adoption, and diffusion. So when we refer to cyber infrastructure or RCD, research computing and data, in other parts of the world, this may be referred to as e-science or e-infrastructure. Um, here specifically, we're referring to big data science projects in STEM. There are many ways of looking at big data. Here, we're specifically referring to the collection of tools, network storage, etc., that comprise what we in the U.S. have called cyber infrastructure, which is a, a term that was coined by the National Science Foundation. But these big data science projects are socio-technical in nature. They require an integration of technical experts on a collaborative team with a productive culture on a daily basis. And while much of the discussions in big data conferences such as these tend to revolve more around the technical aspects of the field, there's been a growing interest in, in what exactly makes these big data projects successful. So here we're specifically interested in what provides organizational capacity for big data project teams. And while much of the research on team-based science has sought to improve the outcomes of these large-scale scientific collaborative efforts, however, defining clearly what constitutes research team success and valid measurable outputs has remained a challenge for scholars. And so the research question that we pose here asks, what are the characteristics of a big data science team and what socio-technical activities take place on a daily basis that enable it to move towards these long-term goals of effective CI implementation, adoption, and diffusion in STEM. So first we'd like to um, define more clearly some of the concepts that we're using here. So when we refer to organizational capacity, what we're referring to is what enables team members to do their work on a daily basis towards their long-term goals. And by implementation, we're referring to the regular and active use of big data and related technologies in the project. By adoption, we're referring to the decision and continuing commitment to put big data to use. And then diffusion refers to the systemic spread of CI and RCD tools and techniques uh, and big data in STEM. So our objective here is to describe a scale development effort to quantitatively measure organizational capacity for CI implementation, adoption, and diffusion, specifically at the team's level. This effort will provide a method for generating a score quickly and quantitatively for big data science teams to use as a kind of self-assessment to determine their uh, capacity or readiness to adopt CI tools. So we like to use the analogy of a FICO score or a credit score that can be used to give quick indications of someone's credit worthiness or credit standing in the same way we hope to use this score uh, for research teams to use as a self-assessment tool to assess their readiness to adopt CI tools. And this score can be the composite score for each factor that we've identified and defined here, or it can be the average score across three dimensions that we describe here. So the focus of this paper is to report scale items developed based on the qualitative findings and the steps we took beyond the original grounded analysis. And so this is the first phase of our scale development effort to design the items prior to quantitative testing. So to do this, uh, the scaled, scale items developed here were grounded in analysis of 120 interviews that took place between 2016 and 2019 with a range of CI users, developers, project administrators across the US. Then grounded theory analysis was used to analyze these transcripts which yielded a preliminary framework for the overall project and yielded findings at the personal level, the team level, university level, and community level. However, because this paper specifically focuses on what provides organizational capacity for research teams, here we spe specifically focus on the team level. And these scale items were developed between the three co-authors in an iterative fashion, going between the scale items, the literature, and the interview data. These items were then pilot tested with eight CI and RCD professionals in the field to get their feedback. And then we incorporated all their suggestions into the scale, making the instrument more mature, robust, and context sensitive. So here we re report these scale items broken down into three broad categories. 
The first is technical expertise by team members. The second is daily social interactions within the team. And then third, the enduring and general organizational qualities. So the first category we have here, technical expertise by team members, can be further broken down into three subcategories of internally and externally recognized expertise, as well as science and scientific communication. So these scale items in the instrument are being introduced with the stem sentence of my team, and then respondents will indicate their level of agreement or disagreement with, with each of the items using a seven point Likert scale that ranges from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And here, the first category that we have is internally recognized expertise. And for the interest of time, I will read just a few of these uh, to uh, bring the point home. Uh, so for example, again, these are introduced with the stem sentence of my team. So my team has internal members I can discuss CI related problems with. My team encourages everyone to get involved in publishing, not simply the PI and or a few others. So the second category we have was externally recognized expertise. And some of the items here include is recognized by peers in the field to be CI experts. My team often gets contacted by peers when they have questions about using CI and so forth. And then the third category was science and scientific communication. Some examples here include my team participates in workshops and conferences in my field to represent the team or my team maintains a website to communicate our work to peers and the general public. The second broad category that we had was daily social interactions within the team. And then again, this category can be broken down into four subcategories of project management, team improvement, staffing and training, and resource optimization. So again, here, some of the items under project management, project management include, my team tracks progress against a project timeline, my team has a platform for project management, which the whole team uses, etc. And then for team improvement, some of the items include assesses team performance on a regular basis, encourages professional growth uh, of team members, etc. And then staffing and training items include effectively manages workload distribution, share stories of past successes, challenges, etc. with the new team with with new team members and so on. Resource optimization items include makes the most out of limited resources, my team generates ideas to help reduce costs, etc. And then our third broad category that we have was enduring organizational or macro qualities. This category again can be broken down into four subcategories of team norms, team collaboration, reflective organizing, and absorptive capacity. So again, here we have items for team norms, which include my team has clear goals and objectives. My team shares a common organizational culture, etc. For team collaboration, some of the items include my team promotes knowledge sharing among team members. My team collaborates successfully within the team, etc. For reflective organizing, my team learns from past mistakes. My team anticipates possible problems that may arise, etc. And then for absorptive, capa uh, absorptive capacity, <clears throat> my team is adapted to project barriers. My team is able to pivot and adapt to new changes, etc. And so just to summarize, we have these three main dimensions of technical expertise, social, uh, daily social interactions, and enduring organizational qualities, which each of these, again, these dimensions can be broken out into their uh, sub-dimensions. So some of the implications from this work are as follows. First, for effective CI implementation, teams should score high or excel in these three broad categories that we find here, technical expertise, daily social interactions, and enduring organizational qualities. Second, we argue that what really enables members to do their, daily, to do their work on a daily basis at the micro level really comes from their technical expertise or their base or foundation and their enduring organizational or macro qualities. Third, uh, teams can use the descriptions in these scale items here as capacity building activities or intervention strategies. So for example, items like encourages everyone to get involved in publishing, not simply the PI and or a few others, share stories of past successes or challenges with new team members, or anticipates possible problems that may arise. Again, these items can be used as capacity building activities or intervention strategies. 
And then this, uh, the next step of this project is to subject this framework to quantitative testing, uh, both exploratory factor analysis as well as confirmatory factor analysis. And then we hope to correlate these factors with performance outcomes such as number of citation, uh, level of funding, um, number of publications, etc. And so finally, uh, for a successful uh, CI and RCD diffusion strategy, what should take place between the initial adoption and effective implementation requires these three levels of micro daily team interactions, the macro level of enduring organizational qualities, and then the foundational level of technical expertise by the team members. And so with that, I, I thank you all for your attention and I open it up to questions.